Hi, this is Vamil from Sherbrooke for the LVC CIRAS 2022 FR. The flight platform we will use is our Exacopter Orion. It weighs 22 pounds and has a diameter of 43.3 inches. The values taken from the EU VSI 2019 competition show it has an autonomy of 30 minutes, which means five, nearly 5 miles at a speed of 19 knots, as well as a thrust weight ratio of 2.2. Orion uses two onboard computers, the autopilot and the payload controller the latter of which controls the gimbal, the camera, and the drop mechanism for the UGV. These systems are connected with four links to the ground control station. The other pilot uses a 900 MHz RFD 900 Plus for telemetry and control, as well as a 2.4 GHz spectrum antenna for the safety pilot. The payload controller uses a 5.8 GHz omnidirectional Wi-Fi antenna, and the UGV uses a 900 MHz 3DR antenna. All the computers on the ground control station are connected to the interop system. The GCS computer sends the drone's telemetry to the interop. The imagery server receives the images and sends them to the imagery client. These clients tag the images, create the map, and send them to the interop system. We will attempt all tasks during the mission. However, the ODLC will not be autonomous. We have a high degree of confidence in the task which we have accomplished before in competition and a medium degree of confidence in the mapping and air delivery. Over the years leading up to this competition, many tests were executed to ensure that the platform and the payload were working as expected and to reduce the risk of crashing. Testing is separated in three categories, unit tests, integration tests, and simulations. Unit tests focus on the functions of individual subsystems. Once the subsystems are verified to be working and do not pose a danger in flight, they can be integrated in the UAS. Integration tests then ensure that all subsystems are working together without interfering with, it, with each other. Lastly, simulations will allow us to test all systems in several practice flights. Full mission simulations can be done once every system is working. For the autonomous flight, we started by doing unit tests on the autopilot to see if every system is functioning separately before the competition. We did motor tests on a test bench to calibrate them. The GCS antenna was tested at a range of 2 km at a speed of 64 kb per second and had a result of 98% of the packet received. The compass was then calibrated. The failsafe were tested on the ground before the first flight to ensure that the autopilot respond correctly to a loss of communication. After unit tests, integration tests were made. At first, in manual mode, PD calibration was made. After, we were sure that the UV could safely fly, the auto takeoff and auto land were tested successfully. Then, autonomous flight with and without pedal were made. For the autonomous flight accuracy, we are pretty confident in our capability as our platform is reliable. At the last competition in 2019, we had an average distance from the waypoint of 1.5 feet and we are confident to do even better this year. The autonomous flight is a plan automatically generated by custom plugin in Mission Planner. The first plugin read the mission on interrupt and display key information on the map. The second plugin create a flight plan according to the waypoint and delimit the grid zone for the search zone and mapping. After the flight plan is generated, another plugin avoids the obstacles. It does this by adding waypoints around any obstacles that is traversed by a flight path. The imaging system is made of 24 megapixel Sony Alpha A5100 camera and a custom two axis gimbal. We have been using this system for five years in previous competitions. The payload link is connected to a 380 degrees tracking antenna. It is used to transfer the image as well as payload control. It achieves a data rate of 65 megabit per second at a range of one mile. This is twice than the required bandwidth and further than necessary for the competition. The camera settings are optimized for image clarity. The shutter speed is set to minimize the vibrations and the speed of the drone. Rubber dampers are also used to minimize the vibration. The focus is set to 164 feet as this is the altitude at which the imaging task will be done. With a 24 megapixel camera, it gives a resolution of 2 pixels per inch. At 19.4 knots, we get 50% image overlap. This is enough to identify correctly targets. Here are two images taken from the two last competition. We can clearly see the targets from 170 feet. ODLC's position and orientation are interpolated from the angle and the orientation of the camera as well as the localization of the UAV. Three flights were connected to optimize the synchronization between the camera and the telemetry. During test flights, 
32 practice targets were located with an average accuracy of 9.6 feet. Two competition flights were connected where 6 out of 10 targets were located within 10 feet and the remaining 4 were located within 20 feet. To ensure reliability of the imaging system, each component was tested individually. For example, gimbal control was tested in flights for precision and vibrations. Integration tests are then performed. The oleocyst detection is tested for accuracy of orientation and geolocalization. The antenna and the payload link are tested for maximum range and reliability. The payload system is controlled by MAPUS and NATUS, two user-friendly interfaces that give live feedback to the payload controller on the ground. For the mapping task, the team plans to use Agisoft. With Agisoft, we are able to take the pictures received through our imaging system and create a 2D orthomosaic map. The software does this by first aligning the pictures and creating a 3D mesh of the area. It can then stitch the picture together to create a complete high-resolution map. The team has been using Agisoft for previous competitions during the last eight years. This year, we generated nine maps. We are thus confident about our capacity to generate a map at a competition under 25 minutes. All of the generated maps have a minimum of 14 pixels per feet. They can be cropped and reduced in quality to respect the 1 megabyte file size limit. Maps are exported in a JPEG that respects the Mercator projection standard. Agisoft has also the advantage to correct for lens distortion in perspective. The generated maps were all around 4 million square feet. This year, the task consists of gently dropping an unmanned ground vehicle carrying a water bottle. This UGV, after being gently delivered to a target, needs to reach another target by itself. To achieve the airdrop task, the team redesigned completely its UGV. It will be dropped by a 100 feet winch that is equipped with a quick release mechanism. This allows the UAV to respect the minimum altitude of 100 feet. The first component of the system is the winch. The winch is directly mounted under the UAV behind the gimbal. This component was optimized to reach the smallest structure possible to fit correctly under the drone while keeping in mind the structure needs to hold the weight of the UGV. In order to achieve the mission in the best possible way, we tried to keep the time required to, de to deliver the UGV as low as possible. Knowing the UGV needs to be dropped gently, the winch motor is controlled in velocity. With a 12 volt motor rotating at a speed of 195 RPM, the entire delivery of the UGV takes approximately 80 seconds. The UGV is the one that will transport the water bottle during all the mission. As described previously, it will be delivered from the UAV by a winch. Once released on the ground, the UGV is capable of moving to a different target. It is equipped with all the necessary components and telemetry to achieve the task. The UGV has a special design giving us the opportunity to transport a water bottle while being the most compact. A two wheels drive was chosen to save on the numbers of motors to keep the weight as low as possible. The wheels were designed to be efficient on all kinds of surfaces. Two DC motors ensure the UGV motorization. They are capable of rotating at a speed of 90 RPM. With all the tests the team has done, the UGV is capable of reaching a top speed of 2.34 feet per second. It has an autonomy of 20 minutes. It has a total weight of 958 grams. We tried our air system delivery five times with another UGV. We have a 60% chance of reaching the target within five feet. We also dropped the current UGV several times for an altitude of six feet in order to evaluate its resistance. Therefore, the team is confident the UGV will be delivered safely and precisely. To prepare the team for the competition, we first did ground simulations, which included all pre-flight preparations and post-flight processing using datasets of previous year's competitions. Once the team was ready, we did air simulations. We set up an interrupt system and populated a search area with our own targets, allowing us to perform all tasks of the mission and simulation. Another important part of our testing is our participation in another competition, AEAC SUAS. The mission of this competition also included tasks related to target localization and tracking, as well as an air delivery. Many of the systems used in this year's AOVSI SUAS were validated in this competition. The simulations and tests we perform allow us to draft a table of our expected results. Our strengths being autonomous flight, obstacle avoidance, and ODLC should allow us to perform well and achieve a score near 80%. We believe that our testing has proven that our systems are safe and ready for the competition. We are excited to finally be able to compete after three years and we hope to place in the top five this year.